My name is Jeremy Wright, and I wanted to talk about the Modern Classroom Project, which I was really excited to take part in um, this summer. And um, what really excited me about it was that it gave me an opportunity to learn how to actually achieve mastery in the classroom. And, um, you know, sometimes as, as teachers, you know, we, we learn about teaching to mastery, but it's hard to actually do that whenever you're trying to keep up with your pacing guides and your curriculum and so forth and actually, you know, stopping and, and, and having the time to go back and, and fix misconceptions and so forth um, can be a challenge. So this is actually a way that teachers can teach to mastery and at the same time instill responsibility in your students. So um, I wanted to talk about that and then one thing very important with the Modern Classroom Project is the mastery-based grading. So students are given an opportunity to actually achieve mastery on, on topics rather than just moving at the pace of the teacher. Grading is done once a student is ready and confident to attempt a mastery check, which is kind of different from the uh, standard classroom where you know, the teacher says, hey, we're taking the test Thursday and you, know, you just have to be ready. And in this, it kind of puts that uh, responsibility um, for that self-regulation in the students, uh, puts that responsibility on the students. And whenever they're ready to be graded, they choose to take a mastery check. The students are given higher order questions and the opportunity to, de to demonstrate that they have mastered the material and that they can explain it, not simply just memorizing the correct answers uh, so they can pass a test. So how has this helped my class? Teaching to mastery has been something, like I said, I've been interested in, but was always kind of wondering, how do you actually do it? So I struggled to figure this out, uh, how to make sure everyone had mastered the content, and, but at the same time, keep up with, you know, I should be only spending so many weeks, according to our pacing guide. You know, I should only be so many weeks on this. But what happens if a student after that four week unit or whatever it is, if they still don't understand it, what do you do? So this having students work at their own pace has solved that problem. Students demonstrating that they are mastering key skills and concepts. So um, I'll kind of explain what you're seeing in these, these pictures in just a second. But one of the things with this model of the modern classroom is the blended instruction component. So I use videos that I have made to instruct students. Rather than stand up in front, in front of the class and lecture and you know, lead a whole group uh, instruction, direct instruction, I just put that on video. And that frees me up to be able to help students one-on-one -on -one or even in small groups. The students, what I find is the students enjoy learning this way because they can actually pause the video and write down notes. They can't pause me uh, if I'm just standing there in front of the class talking to the whole class. Um, and, and they don't have to ask me to, you know, pause or, hey, go back. I, did, I missed something. I didn't get to write something down or whatever. And it puts them in a position where they can kind of monitor their own learning and if they are you know needing to slow down they can pause the videos and write down their notes or if they realize that they don't understand something they can go back and re-watch it immediately. Students also complete other types of activities once they've laid the foundation by viewing the screencast videos that I make. So what we're seeing here in these pictures is the students are actually in the process of taking notes. This is videos that I have made. Um, and they, they're writing down the notes and I do guided notes. So I highlight things that I want them to write down. Um, I underline vocabulary words. So everything is, they get into this routine. They're, they're used to uh, knowing what to look for to write down. So we're seeing students actually in the process of taking notes by, based on the, uh, the teacher created videos. 
the self-paced structure, students are responsible for keeping up with an individual pacing guide. And here it is in the corner and we'll see it. I'll blow it up in just a second. Um, but this self-pacing guide for a student tells them the lessons that are, there's three categories. So there are the lessons that must be done, that everybody has to do. Then there is a, a second tier, which is the should be done lessons. And then we also have the uh, should aspire to do lessons. And so those are going to be more like, you know, projects and, and things for, for those that are moving um, kind of ahead of, of the suggested dates, uh, they should make it to the aspire to do. And this would be higher order kind of stuff. There's also a public facing student tracker that allows the teacher and the students to see how each student is progressing. This allows for peer tutoring and also for grouping to be done effectively. If a student needs help with lesson 2.3, then the teacher can easily see which students have already mastered that lesson and pair that struggling student with one who has already mastered that lesson's content. Okay, this was an example of a student self-pacing guide. And here we see the, the lesson and it's color coded. So the students know that the red are the must do the yellow is the should do activities and the green would be the aspire to do. So hopefully we're getting all of them, but at the very least, everyone is doing the lessons in the red, no matter, you know, how, how slow you might be moving. Everyone is going to be at least doing the must do lessons. And hopefully everyone is getting to should do and aspire to do as well. This is the public facing, we call it, so that students can see this. Um, it just gives an idea. This is just an example. I put the, the student, uh, you know, student names, we've got numbers in here. Um, so I can look at this and I can tell which students are uh, on which assignment. So if a student says that, you know, they need help, um, with, you know, that, that first lesson in the unit, I can look and say, okay, student one needs help. Uh, so I could go to say student five or student six, either one who has already mastered that and they're moving on and they're now in working on, uh, lessons ahead of that first lesson. So I can even do some peer tutoring and put student six with student one and let, let that student help me instruct the struggling student. And here we see uh, on the left is a student who's actually tracking where they're at with their self-pacing guide. And then uh, the mastery checks are how they move on. So that's how they move on from one lesson to the next. And so on the right, we see two students who have felt that they're ready. They they can view the, the videos and the assignments and things as many times as they want before they're ready to demonstrate that they have mastered the content. And here they're ready and they're in the process of answering the questions uh, to demonstrate their mastery. Now, another feature with the uh, Modern Classrooms project was the uh, kind of the organization just thinking about how you're going to to deliver this to the students. So I just stuck with what was familiar with me. I stuck with Google Classroom because that's what we use at the, the school district that I work in. And um, it's what the kids are familiar with as well. So, you know, as a teacher, you're, you know, you decide, um, once you decide to utilize this model, you have to consider how the students are going to access their learning materials. Um, it can be done in, in different, um, you know, different uh, uh, venues, I guess you'd say, where Google Classroom was just familiar and handy, but I know there's others out there. I've even heard of teachers using Evernote uh, and, and things like that, where they're putting assignments on there as notes and they're, they're kind of categorizing them similar to what we're doing. But in my case, um, being used to Google Classroom, I just stuck with Google Classroom. So I create a topic for that unit and then place all the videos, activities, and assignments on Google Classroom within that topic. And students then move at their own pace as everything is numbered and standardized and they, they can easily figure things out and 
find what they're looking for. So in conclusion, um, kind of a look at how I apply the modern classroom model. I plan the time period that the unit should take. So let's say that this unit is four, four weeks long. Um, you're basically kind of turning it over because I've always wondered, you know, with, with this, you know, you're letting students kind of have control of the pacing. And that kind of worried me. And I wondered, you know, I just put like all years, the whole, the whole school year's worth of assignments on there and just let them, you know, have free reign with it. And really that's not what the modern classroom uh, project suggests. They suggest moving more so having free reign within a unit. So in this four week unit, yes, the students kind of have that free reign and they can move at their own pace. So I create a pacing guide for the students that suggests to them the date that they should do each lesson. And this allows them to know if they're on track or if they're ahead or behind. And I still build in time for whole group instruction because I feel like that's essential for learning. We still do kind of the normal, normal school stuff. It's just, uh, it's just not the, the way that I introduce new material to the students. Um, so we're still having group activities, class discussions. Students have expressed to me that they feel they learn better using this model. And I agree, I think they do as well. Um, I think they enjoy kind of that, um, they feel sort of adult-like where they're in charge of their own learning and they're learning, you know, not just to do something because the teacher said, but, you know, watch this and, oh, if I realize I don't understand what I just heard, I need to back this up and watch it again. I need to, I need to take my time. It's not hurry and get through it. And they're pretty good at, at actually, you know, doing that. And once they get the hang of it, um, they do pretty well with it. I finally have a way to actually teach students until they master content. And that is what I'm excited about. That, that's really what brought me to the Modern Classroom Project was this actually, I feel, is a way that you can teach to mastery, which is hard to achieve any other way that I've tried.